Brad here with Twisted Elk Brewery. Today we're going to talk about filtering beer utilizing a canister style filter. I will say that this is not my favorite style of beer filtering. I prefer the plate filter. I'll leave a link in the description below on the video that I did on the plate filter kit. But this one is not bad. I mean, it does have its pros and cons, and we're going to talk about that. One of the biggest pros on this is affordability. I think it's around 70 bucks. You get the whole kit with the ball lock fittings and everything. This particular one, I modified it. I put on the tri-clamp fittings. I upgraded the hose size, put some different fittings on. You could actually build this whole filter system yourself. I don't know if you'd really save any money, uh, but it's basically a water filter housing, and you could put whatever plumbing fittings you want. You could run whatever hose you want. I like these platinum cure hoses, and I want to go with a wider mouth and a wider tri-clamp fitting. The next thing I want to talk about here is the types of media that you can get for this. So there's a wide variety of media you can get for this. There's some websites that sell media specifically for filtering beer and wine. Um, you can, and I've done it as a home brewer, I went out and I just bought like a basic sediment water filter. You can actually get water filters that are, you know have different micron ratings and you could try and get whatever one you want. But they are a little pricey. For only filtering one batch of beer, especially if you're a home brewer, I feel like these are a little pricey. I'm sure you could buy them in bulk and they'd be a little bit cheaper if you really wanted to go that route. But I feel like the uh, plate filter system, the filters for that and the media for that is a little bit more affordable. So that is one of the reasons I kind of prefer that over this. But it's still not bad. I mean, these are readily available. And the other type of media that I found is the clarifier, the stainless steel. And I found this when I was home brewing, and I thought, well, this is a clever idea. This, uh, this could save me a lot of money, you know, because I could just keep washing and reusing this, this filter. I will say I made the mistake with going with the one micron rating. They make these in different ratings. I don't remember how big they make them and uh, how coarse they make them, but I wish I would have got a more coarse filter. So when you're young and uh, filtering and home brewing like I was, I thought I wanted my beer to be super clean and I was doing a, a Pilsner at the time and I was like, yeah, I want a nice clean crisp Pilsner. And I thought this would get me there. But what I found out was it clogged almost immediately. I may have squeaked out like a half a gallon and it just plugged solid. I was getting no movement out of it. And I realized that, yeah, I definitely went too small in the one micron rating. The other thing I noticed when I got this Look at the size difference. I was expecting this to be the size of this, and it came really, really small and skinny like that. So there's really not a lot of surface area here. So I think that is another uh, thing that makes this plug easy is it doesn't have enough surface area. So if you had some really clean beer or you were using this in a two-stage filtering process, this might be good and useful. Or if you had the other one, the larger one, which I'd like to try sometime and see how that one works, then that might be good. The other negative or downside with this is you do have to clean them. And I always worried and concerned me that how well these really got clean, were they sterile? I mean, you don't want whatever beer you put in there, let's say that there was a contamination with it, or um, there's a little bit of yeast that made it through there. You don't want to use this and contaminate your other batch by accident. So I was soaking it in some PBW solution. You can, as soon as you're done filtering, you can back flush it and you can get a bunch of the heavy debris out first. Um, I would fill this whole container up and I would just let it soak overnight with a PBW solution. And then I would kind of rinse it out, wash it really good. I'd take a brush in there and then I would actually put it in a pot and boil it before my next filtering session. So it seemed like a lot of work. So yeah, you're saving some money, but you're also putting a lot more work. What is your time worth, you know? So actually I ended up preferring just buying the cartridge filters and just chuck them in the garbage when I was done. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's way less hassle and time is valuable. So that's our filter media. So let's talk about some of the other pros and cons that are involved in this. So the other pro that I say with this is it's super easy to set up. I mean, there's really nothing to it. You unscrew it. There is one little gasket in there. You just gotta be careful that that's in place. Pop your filter in there, screw it back on, flush it with water, and you're good to go. I mean, you obviously have to like clean it really well and sanitize it, make sure you're doing you know, your proper steps. But other than that, it's ready to go. So from a setup point of view, this is probably the easiest filter that you're gonna get. And I will say on this part, this is another pain in the butt thing that I found with this, is it's so small, 
it kind of wobbles in there and it is kind of hard sometimes to get it started in there. You got to kind of work with it and wobble it to get it started on there. So uh, whereas the, the big like paper media filters, they pop in there, they stay in place, lid screws right on them. So basically if you're new to home brewing or you're new to filtering and you want to get started, try something out uh, for like 70 bucks, somewhere around there, this is not a bad little filter system. Uh, especially if you decide you want to go with this stainless steel version. I don't know of another one that has this stainless steel filter option on it, which is kind of cool if that's the way you want to go. You want, I actually haven't used this thing in a long time, so I figured why not fire it up and see what happens. I got the uh, one micron stainless steel filter in here. I got some beer I brought back from one of the events. I only had a little bit of beer left in it, so I figured it'd be a prime candidate just to test it out, see what happens. Um, typically you wouldn't want to filter carbonated beer, but being that that's kind of what I have right now and I just want to play with it and see what happens, that's what we're going to do. You can actually see the beer, beer coming in here. It's all foam right now. Like I said, it's uh, a carbonated beer and you would typically not filter a carbonated beer like this. But it is kind of cool seeing how it kind of fills up like that. And so far I'm getting nothing out of this. Oh, there we go. A little bit of foam coming through. Now I'm thinking once the pressure's uh, stabilized and everything that we should start getting some clear liquid coming through. You can see the beer building from the bottom. And we are filtering. It's definitely blowing out all that CO2 that's in the beer out of solution. That is another kind of pain in the butt thing with this filter is it's kind of awkward. The plate filter will just stay upright. You know, this thing is wobbling all over the place so trying to get stabilized on the table so it doesn't fall over on you if you want to go hands free is a big pain in the butt so right now i just got to drain into a bucket now typically you'd hook that other line up to your receiving keg or receiving tank or whatever you do but for this beer it is a dark belgian beer it actually does look fairly Fairly clear, I will say. Okay, filtering's all done. Now we're ready to clean this thing out. It is fairly easy to clean, so we're going to back flush it. We're going to bring the hot water in backwards so that we're flushing out that filter media in there. So on this, because I'm using the tri clamps, I'm just going to hook my hose up right here. You could use the ball lock fittings. You could run some uh, PBW mixture into a corny keg and run it through there like that. I used to do that when I was home brewing. Here I like to just kind of start with a basic hot water flush. So I'm going to clamp that in there, run some water through it. You know, something I was just thinking of too is the other plus side to this that you don't have with the plate filter is this thing can handle quite a bit of pressure. I mean, these are designed for household applications, so you can actually get, I'd say probably like 20 PSI in here easily, if you want to push your filter that hard. But also keep in mind that when you're uh, running that much pressure through, you're also risking blowing yeast and sediment through your filter. So I'm going to flush this out so you get most of the, the beer and the sediment out of there. You can actually see it bubbling through the, uh, it almost looks like a carb stone. It kind of reminds me of a little carb stone. You can see the, uh, the air bubbling through it, which is pretty cool. All 
All right, so now that I've flushed it out, I'm gonna remove the pressure here, which I really don't have to do because the other end's opened up, but if you're using a, you know, a sealed tank system from one cake to the other, you would have some back pressure, so it's always a good habit to do that, so it's not gonna spray you if you open it up. Um, and then I'm gonna remove this canister, add some PVW, put it back in there, and I'm just gonna let this thing soak overnight, and then tomorrow I'll go back there, back flush it again, I'll take the filter, hit it with a brush, uh, inside now really good and then uh, wash it off really good and pretty much that's it.